the six weeks she was down here, he came down for the last week. And that's when they went to the beach and stuff. Of course, we went down to the beach at the same time. We said we were five miles apart and never got to see him because she wouldn't allow it. And we got to see him one day, the day before they left to go back, more or less. It okay. was, uh, they stopped down to see my mother when she's in a rehab center. She was 93 years old. And <clears throat> I had to, she wouldn't bring him by here. I had to go pick him up there. I did. And he spent the afternoon here at the house and me and Cindy and Jamie and Robert and the kids and Jamie, uh, other grandbabies. And we cooked out and just sat around and talked and stuff and hung out on the porch. And that's when he told me that they, she only knew that they, they wanted to get a divorce uh -huh. and, and that he was looking for an apartment, for, a little two-bedroom apartment with bunk beds for him and the girls. Because uh, that's how his life is going to be for now. And he had only more or less set a schedule up from a month or so out from that, so you know, I worked the schedule and he'd have them, you know, one week, she'd have them the next week, type thing. Well, that's the first we had heard of it, that yeah. uh, she already knew about it, and actually the house is already, already for sale right. on the market. That was the first we. That's the first we had heard of it. Was that that one, that one day he got to spend with us? That week he was down here. It's pretty much upbeat and stuff. I mean, he was. He knew what what he wanted to do, and like I said, he just he told me he wanted a little two bedroom apartment, bunk beds for the girls. I mean, he was, he was ready to move on with his life. The way she and him and acting, the two times she'd come down, she, two times she'd visit with us. She, uh, her and Cindy got into it a couple times, basically over minor things. One which everybody heard about was the nut gate, where she more or less said Cindy was trying to hurt Cece, give her ice cream and stuff, which, you know, she never gave her the ice cream. And it was a plain vanilla ice cream cup, which... Right didn't have nothing in it and it all blew up on that when she accused Cindy of trying to hurt Cece by giving her something with nuts in it which we all knew she didn't have nuts right but that was in the time before that well, she came down twice two weekends in a row <clears throat> in the time before that when uh, my neighbor had passed away and Cindy went to get her hair fixed and stuff and she come by my work and signed some paperwork on the car that we was getting and she was gone you know probably three or four hours or whatever. And she called my phone at work, blowing it up, but Cindy left her phone at the hairdresser and had to try and go back and get it, which made her later. And Cindy offered beforehand, said, I'm going to take you back to seven pounds an ounce. And no, I'll just wait till you get none with everything. And she fussed at uh, Cindy saying, you left me alone with these kids for five hours. I said, well, they're your kids too. I mean, you're not down here for us to watch them 24 seven. I thought she'd just run off with the kids just to punish Chris for something. I thought she would just run off with the kids somewhere and just punishing Chris for something. That's just the way she is. Not just one thing that really I didn't, I didn't catch what he was saying. I mean, the, the police department, the Frederick police department kept calling. One of the detectives there kept calling him and they kept dropping the call. And every time we start talking, he'd call back again. And then Chris would talk to him a few minutes. He'd drop the call on a bad reception or whatever. And <clears throat> he just said one thing, which it didn't make any sense to me at the time. He said, so I wish I should have just went to the Rockies game that night, mm. which it didn't click at the time. Yeah, because when we was talking, when he told me what happened and actually and told me where the girls were at. And he said, dad, I could not put them with her after what she did to him. And he, then right after that, he said she was evil.
It's I very seldom ever crying. The last two times I ever remember crying was that memorial service we had for Bella and CC at the grave site. I did cry there. And a few weeks later, I was at church when I got baptized and was all hugging and worshiping with the preacher and everything and talking. I was crying then. I think that's a long time. She seen me crying probably last 20 years, probably. I hold a lot of things in and what she does too. And that's, you can take it for what it is. That's why that's I was brought up, I'm sorry. After everything was over, they ended up taking me to a hotel and because I wasn't going to stay at the house or anything. So I went to a hotel and I called back and stuff the next morning trying to find out where he was at, where I could see him and stuff. He said, no, you can't see him. And actually never would, did tell me where he was at. They said he's not allowed any visitors or anything at this time. So I never got to see him again. I tried two or three times that day to get up with him. And that's Wait. when I was leaving, going, leaving, going back to the airport. That's when the uh, defense lawyers called me. And I turned around and come back and talk to them that afternoon. No, no. The only time we got to see him from the time of his arrest was the night before the plea deal. We got to see him each time I talked to him for 30 minutes on my close circuit TV. Nothing from the girls. Actually, Frank brought back some of Chris's jerseys and stuff and brought back. We met here in Fayetteville and he gave them to me and stuff. And I asked, called, try to get, they sent me his wallet. I called the DA trying to get his phone and he refused to return it to me. And I said, the only reason behind that, and he said, well, he, he had heard on through People Magazine or whatever that Christopher might be appealing this case, so he would not give me his phone. The night before the sentencing, we actually got to see the assistant DA. We didn't get to see the day assistant DA. So we went over to see him that night with the uh, so-called so -called victim's advocate person and talked to him. And we went in there and sat down with him and we was talking. And I said, I asked him, I said, uh, what evidence do you have? And he said, well, we have a theory. And I said, well, what evidence do you have? And he kept saying, we got a theory. He would never tell me what evidence. He never showed us any evidence. He never said he had any evidence. He said, we have a theory. Uh, well, it's the same song and dance he did in this interview after the after sentencing. He never would say what he showed us because he didn't show us anything at all. Not till right before the sentencing. We was at the hotel with her right before we went over. We both, me and Cindy both wrote out what we was going to say. We asked her what she was going to say. She said she was going to wing it. And we had no idea what she was going to say when she got up there. And we was just shocked as everybody else was what she said because we did not agree with anything she said. Well, that was only the second time we'd seen them in from the time it happened till the sentencing and it was hard very hard for us but you know we still love our son no matter what and it's very hard to go through losing the grandchildren and everything i mean it's, it's been real hard on us the last two years I mean, but uh, we was there for him because the whole world is against him right now so i guess we're the only ones he's got left Yeah, when he gets a call, sometimes they've been on lockdown because of the COVID and stuff. Sometimes he gets a call, sometimes he don't. So we talk to him whenever he can, he can get out to call us. That was totally false. When we got to talk to him the night before the plea deal, we were told not to discuss the case. And if we did, they'd shut it down. We could have all the small talk we wanted to, but not to mention the case. And the one time, Cindy did ask him, uh, Chris, if you did not do this, please do not plead guilty or accept the plea deal. 
and he turned around and looked at his attorneys. We had some attorneys behind us, and he had no attorneys with him. He turned around and looked at them, turned back and looked at Cindy and said, Mom, I made my decision. He didn't say I did it. He said, Mom, I made my decision. So they kept telling him it didn't matter if it's one or three. He's still going to get life in prison. And all, all they're trying to do right then was save his life. basically the same thing I mean they come out right after we had a hurricane and stuff down here and they sat down with us and told us more or less I mean we're, they're just trying to save his life you know said it didn't matter one or three I mean he's still gonna get life in prison not, not in Colorado yeah it ain't happened in probably 30 40 years if then I'm not sure the last time they put somebody to death Right. Uh, never received it. That one time I didn't talk to Mr. Work. I asked him about it, about the uh, who the father of the baby was. He said Chris, and that's all he said. But the other person that was questionable about that, his name is also Chris. So you can take it for that for what it's worth. I don't, don't, no, the only time I ever talked to that man was on the phone when I was in North Carolina and he was in Colorado. Never never met the man before. The only time I ever seen him was in the courtroom. And the only one I ever talked in the DA's office was assistant DA the night before the sentencing. That's very hard to say. So I don't know if it's something they needed or they was doing that for the other part of the family or what the reason behind that was. No, we had no clue there was going up there. We didn't know until after the fact, what a few days after the fact, and Chris told us that they came up there. Or however, how, I'm not sure how, what the time period was, but we never knew about it till way after they went up there. Yeah. And then of course they lied to them, which I guess they can do that and said it was it's just between them of course they recorded it and released every bit of it which Chris said he had to, thought he had to tell them something so I guess he just made up something so they'd leave him alone he, he's the same way I am it takes a whole lot to make me mad the same way with him I don't like confrontation at all I, mean, I ain't never been that way The hurt and the pain I seen in that boy's face that day, I believe what he told me sitting there. I mean, he's just like, as far as emotions, he's just like me. He's he, When he told me, he said, Dad, I cannot put them with her after what she did. And turned around after that said she was evil. And I believe him. It's going to be a long, hard road, but I think if we can find the right person to defend them or a lawyer or whatever and actually dive deep into the case and see if they do have any evidence which actually they told me they had a theory they never told me they had any evidence at all if there was any evidence there it's long gone by now because everybody and their brother's been in that house i think he was in shock for so long from everything that happened um, at the trauma of his post-traumatic stress syndrome or whatever, I think that set in and it's took him a long while. It's, it, it still hurts him every day. I know it does hurts us every day. Yeah. It's going to be a long road for you ever. Anybody gets back to a normal life, if we ever get back to a normal life. Mm -hmm. 